Navitech in Honolulu. There we go. Um, I was asked to start off a little bit slow, so I'll uh, pay my regards to the Ullman family for putting together such a nice conference. Also, the Office of Naval Research has been um, very instrumental in supporting our work, uh, the Combatant Craft Department, and also um, Lauren Campbell and, and Ice Marine. So, uh, my presentation today is on the aft lifting body, which is a Navitech ride control product. Um, and uh, here we go. So Navitech's been around for about 20 years and, and started off doing a large stable ship design. Uh, we're heavily invested in computational fluid dynamics um, and simulation codes. And out of that work has come this aft lifting body product for small high-speed craft. Um, it's a fully submerged foil. It has a large plan form area, so it has a lot of dampening. Um, it does give directional stability and controllability and passively stabilizes and roll. Um, it's retractable to preserve uh, shallow water capability and transportability. And we've done a number of these uh, projects so far. Um, the, the initial demonstrator being an Aeronau catamaran uh, that led into a project uh, on um, the LCS USV. Uh, we, we had hull zero in, in Honolulu, and so we outfitted that. The, the goal was to uh, control motions for towing large arrays. Um, you'll see some video in a second of uh, ALB outfitted on a uh, NSW 11 meter rib. And then also the Sea Blade after it was at the last HSBO forum uh, two years ago. We outfitted it with an ALB and did quite a bit of testing on it in the UK, and that boat is now in uh, Florida. Let's see if we can... So the ALB boat in the bottom video is closest to us. It's also the boat on the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you watch the horizon in the upper shots, you'll see that the unappended boat on the left there's a lot more rolling, a lot more pitching. Um, this is 30 knots downswell on a, a pretty windy day. So the Command and Craft Department did side-by-side -side trials of the two boats. Um, The um, results of those trials uh, in a head seas, a cruise speed, and sea state three uh, for average of the one tenth highest accelerations, we had reductions of anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. Um, vertical bow accelerations, uh, reductions of 64 percent. And we're doing that through controlling trim and also not let, uh, letting the boat launch off the waves as much. This is a sea blade after the last HSBO forum, the, the ALB that we installed on, on that boat, uh, designed to look a little bit more commercial. Um, also, the big difference with this one is it's steerable. It, it replaced the center Verado, um, was linked physically with a tie bar to those two engines, and so it steered with the engines. Uh, we did some trials on that on a pretty gusty day out in the Solent. Uh, two to four foot seas, and I kind of threw this up. It's a lot of numbers, but um, what I did want to show is if you're looking at the EU directive, um, you know, time to EAV uh, with the foil retracted, uh, you know, eight minutes. Um, my accelerometer was mounted on the deck in the console forward of the passengers, so this isn't representative of the occupants per se, but um, lengthening that out to, you know, 21 minutes. So, and these are at speeds of 36, 38 knots. Uh, show it a little bit differently. This is accelerations. Um, if we look at, uh, this is that same period, but if we look at two very similar speed ranges, um, the accelerations uh, based around minus one G 
uh, with the foil retracted, you get those 5G hits um, with the foil active or ALB active. And it cuts it down to about two and a half Gs. And you can just see how much tighter the um, acceleration banding is with the active foil. You can also see a little bit of uh, speed variation here that, that gets a lot more controllable as we're holding the boat to the waves. And then this is uh, trim of the vessel um, with the ALB retracted, large trim angles. Uh, they stopped for a second to put the ALB down. You can see it was a pretty gusty day because we're trimming up to 12 degrees. Uh, after that, they take off and we can hold that trim very well. On the sea blade with the foil being uh, steerable uh, with the outboards, what we also get is in um, you know choppy conditions. Uh, this is an operator. This is actually taken from demos we did at the MAC conference last year. Um, the outer lines being where he was comfortable turning the boat with the ALB up and the uh, darker solid lines being where he was comfortable turning the boat with the ALB down. So we're seeing improvements in turning of, of 34%. And I bring this up because when you put a large skeg behind a boat, you get a lot of directional stability, which on a jet boat um, sometimes isn't bad, but, but also you want to be able to turn, and so we're addressing that with steerable designs. And then also um, we've been using our CFD tools to look at interceptor designs um, for steering. Uh, these installations between jets are very tight and don't allow for steerable designs. And so this is a concept being proven out and being uh, implemented on our next three projects where we actually do a, a small interceptor on the trailing edge of uh, blunt base foil. Um, from the CFD, uh, if you look at the different uh, interceptor deployment angles versus yaw, angles on the foil. Um, this is with the foil with no apparent side flow. You see that as you deploy it further you get up to about 7,000 pounds of side force generated from that interceptor and then as you uh, introduce side flow to the foil uh, those forces go down and, and somewhere around 8 degrees of, of yaw or side slip to the foil then things balance out. Um, if you do some calculations on that, that turns out to be about a three to five boat length turn. So, um, we've, we've implemented this on uh, some of our projects uh, to, to actually demonstrate it. Um, you know, if we just used the interceptor, we get a pretty big turn. If we just turned with the helm, we got slightly smaller turn, and then in combination, we get a nice tight turn. So uh, how do we design these things? Um, well, we have our own in-house simulation. Um, it's a uh, panel code that came out of uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The developers are on staff for us. We, we model the boats in rhinoceros, in this case for this simulation. Um, model the foil. Uh, it's a medium fidelity CFD code and it runs in 24 hours we'll get about 10 minutes of simulation data, real-time data. Um, and so we can actually change foil size and optimize it for different boats. Um, we can play with different algorithms and do our control system tuning in the simulation. And one of the questions we've been asked in the past is, you know, what's the benefit of just having a passive foil behind the boat? Um, rather than the fully active control system. And, and this is a pretty good uh, plot of that out of the simulation. Um, an unappended boat, we see a minus 1G free fall event leading up to uh, the big vertical acceleration. Um, it, it trims down and trims back up as it goes through the wave. With a passive foil, um, it doesn't have as much free fall. It's still tends to trim about the same going through the wave, 
but the acceleration spikes about half of what it was unappended. And with the fully active system, it's hard to see. The trim angle doesn't change at all. Um, you don't have any free fall, and, and as you hit that next wave, you uh, just see a, a minor one and a half G event. So that's where our, our shock reduction is coming from. So, um, number of different projects so far, and three more in the works with the U.S. Navy. And um, so that's where we're at. Thank you.